Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to St. Francis Church this morning. Good morning, everybody here in the room. If you're at home on Zoom or if you're joining us on Outreach Radio, good morning and welcome to you wherever you are with us this morning. Uh, this is St. Francis Church. If you're visiting us, welcome. Uh, my name is Ian. I am a uh, minister, a lay minister in training. Um, and, uh, and today in our service, we are having the final service in our series of summer reflections where we've been considering and thinking about recreation and spending time with God. And over the past month, we've considered Sabbath and the importance of that, the refreshing power of water, not worrying. Last week, we looked at thankfulness and today, Steve is going to speak to us about getting away from it all and spending time in prayer with God. So as we come together this morning to spend time with God and to worship and think and reflect on him and speak to him, let us just spend a moment in silence before our opening prayer. We are witnesses to the love God has poured into us. We are witnesses of God's love. Sharing it with each person we meet, we are witnesses to everyone we encounter. Like children like us, sisters and brothers in God's family. Amen. And we're going to have uh, an opening prayer, responsal prayer, that will be on the screen. Um, hopefully those of you on the radio will be able to hear and uh, say these words in your heart as you hear them. I appreciate you can't see them on the screen. So let us pray. When we are overwhelmed, Lord, give us peace. When we are too busy to remember, Lord, give us peace. When we are lost in the pace of life, Lord, give us peace. Lord God, meet us in this room and grant us peace. Brothers and sisters, we are fully aware of the things that we do wrong in our lives and in the world. And that sin disfigures the world and disfigures the whole of creation. The whole of creation groans, Paul tells us, waiting for God's coming again and his redemption. So bring to mind the things that we have not done well this time. And we're going to confess our sins uh, and we're going to say the words together. They should appear, I hope. So, brothers and sisters, let us confess to God the things that have not gone well. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you, Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us for letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us father forgive us save us and help us for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son father forgive us save us and help us and because God is a forgiving and gracious God who freely gave his son to die on the cross and be raised to life again, conquering death and sin forever for us all, I can say on behalf of us all, may God who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, 
forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And this week is what is called in the Church of England Ordinary Time. It has been 14 weeks since Trinity Sunday. Uh, and we continue in ordinary time up until the end of the church year, which will begin at Advent. So there's a few more weeks of ordinary time to go. The collect for this week, uh, for the 14th weekend, uh, week after Trinity. Uh, let's say the collect prayer together, which will appear. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to have some sung praise. We're going to sing two songs. Uh, the first is The Lord's My Shepherd, and the second is Speak Your Name. So I will hand over to the Suzanne and the band, but if you're able, please stand and sing this morning uh, as the sun comes out on us. And I hope the sun is shining on all of you this morning.
please take a seat. What a wonderful prayer in that, uh, in that second song. Jesus, your name covers my mind and my heart, and all we have to do is speak his name. So we're going to have our reading from the Bible this morning. It comes from the Gospel of Mark. Mike is going to read to us. So Mike, would you like to come up and read? Good morning, everyone. The reading this morning is taken, as Ian said, from Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 to 32. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Mike. And uh, I'd like to introduce uh, and bring Steve up, who's going to speak to us. Steve, i am just say a quick word of prayer for you before you speak. Lord, through your Holy Spirit, please speak to us through Steve as he explains and expands on those few verses from Mark's Gospel. Amen. Continue in, in a short prayer. Lord God, we begin this time together by giving you thanks. We thank you for revealing yourself through your word. As we open the Bible today, we pray that we would hear your voice. We ask that your Holy Spirit would be at work, opening our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. May we be transformed into your likeness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So as Ian has uh, already mentioned, today we're looking at getting away from it all to pray. And this is the last in the series that we've been looking at during the summer months. We've looked at God resting after creating the world, why rest matters. The water refreshes us, told not to worry. And last week we were told, we were looked at being thankful. And today we have come to the last in the series, that of getting away from it all to pray. Now in our day and age, in today's world, our lives seem to be governed by iPads, mobile phones, WhatsApp messages, etc., I mean, how many people have one of these on them today? <laughs> hands up. Hands up those who want to admit it. I've got to have my hand up, of course. <laughs> how many of us actually, are, as well, check our messages after the service? Anyone? Quite a few people admitting that. I won't ask the next question, how many of us check the messages during the service? <laughs> but I'll leave that up to your own imagination. How many of us have find time to put these things away and get away from them and then spend time with God in prayer? One report from the World Health Organization has said that the old distinction of day and night, or let's work until five o'clock and then go and have drinks and go to sleep at 10, is for the 20th century. The 21st century is very different. It states, we live in a culture that is 24 seven, Social media is 24-7. Communication is 24-7. Amazon Prime is 24-7. Everything is 24-7. We don't have those fixed boundaries as we used to. And then the report goes on to say that this culture that we live in is affecting, is adversely affecting our health. In today's world, we are trained that time is king. So we talk about how early we get into work, how late we stay, how we take work home with us, use the laptop on the train, make phone calls from the car, as long as you're not driving, answering emails wherever we happen to be. It's amazing how we fill up our lives without giving God any time at all. We find that we have no time to read the Bible, to pray, 
no time to build a relationship with God. It's just amazing to see that as Christians, where our priorities lie. But we see Jesus had a similar problem, that of being overworked and too much being demanded of him. So how did he cope? And how as Christians should we cope in today's world? There are a number of passages in the Bible where we see Jesus going away alone to pray. In Luke, 6, uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 12, we read that before he chose the 12 disciples, he spent the night in prayer. He highlights the importance of seeking God's guidance before making major decisions. And on Mark chapter 1, verse 35, very early in the morning, Jesus went somewhere quiet where he prayed. Jesus wanted to start the day in private with God. And one of the other things that's come out from a lot of these passages is that we see how Jesus spends time with God on his own when he has an important decision to make, when he has something to really to talk to God about. So from these passages and many others, we see that Jesus did get away from it all, to be alone, to pray, and to build a relationship with his heavenly Father. But how and why did he do this? There are many ways he did, but four in particular are the avoidance of worldly distractions. Like us, Jesus lived in a very busy world. The demand of the crowds, the demand of his ministry, the constant activity. Jesus knew that the solution to these distractions was being alone with God in private prayer. Jesus intentionally withdrew from the world to focus his mind on God. In Luke chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus walked away from the crowds to a lonely place to pray. His example encourages us to do the same, reminding us that occasionally we do need to disconnect from God, from our, sorry, from our surroundings, and to reconnect with God so that we may experience God's peace, which, we, as we read in Philippians, is a peace far beyond human understanding. Secondly, he was seeking an individual connection with God. Through his private prayers, Jesus demonstrated that our relationship with God is personal and unique. He re revealed that true communion with God is a heartfelt one-to-one -one conversation and not just a formal public declaration of faith. Jesus' private prayers are a call for us today to encourage our personal relationship with God through a time of private prayer alone with God. Thirdly, encountering God more deeply in silence. There is something about silence that is often lost in the noise of public worship. When Jesus prayed alone, he met God in the silence, encouraging a deep connection with his Father. His private and solitary prayers show the power of silence in helping us today to encounter God more genuinely. And fourthly, prioritising relationship with God over public ministry. During his hectic ministry, Jesus prioritised his relationship with the Father. He often withdrew from the public to foster this heavenly relationship through solitary prayer. Jesus' actions, by putting his relationship with God as the most important, remind us to keep our relation with, relationship with God at the centre of our lives, no matter how busy we may be. In order to do God's work, even Jesus needed to get away from it all and pray. Well, if Jesus needed to do it, then so do we today. So ask yourself, honestly, when was the last time you spent time, real time, alone with God? Is that a habit you have in your life? I mean, don't worry, I'm not looking at this point for a show in your show of hands here. But how can we do this? How can we have a close relationship with God? How can we experience God's peace that, as we have seen in Philippians, is far beyond human understanding. Relationship with God is no different to any other relationship. It takes time, alone, together, in prayer. 
Every relationship needs time together to grow and deepen. A Christian's relationship with God is no different. We need to spend time with God to know him better, to hear him, and to develop a closeness with our Saviour. Today's busy lifestyle makes regular time with God challenging, but it can be done with planning and commitment. If we are to live in God's world, then every so often we need to shut out the world so that we can hear God's voice and God's voice alone. Most of us want, even long, to foster this relationship, but sometimes we aren't sure how to make it happen. The term quiet time is commonly used of this relationship building time that Christians spend one-on-one -on -one with God in prayer, Bible reading, Bible study, using such aids as Lecture 365 or, or Take Time. But Jesus set the example for us. He regularly got away alone to spend time with his Heavenly Father. He put his relationship with God at the centre of his life. Do we spend time with God as the centre of our lives in prayer? We make time for what we value the most. People say that, I don't have time to connect with God, I'm just so busy. But isn't the pro real problem that we don't prioritise our relationship with God in prayer in our individual lives? If we want to grow in our faith and come close to God and experience his peace, then we need to make this a priority. That might mean it needs to take a prominent spot in our calendars and therefore something else needs to be bumped down. Now I know that's not easy. It means that we're going to have to say no to something that is important and that we enjoy. But if we want to grow our faith, we need to follow the example of Jesus and prioritise getting away from it all and spending time with God in prayer and to live as God intended. So once we've decided to spend time with God regularly in prayer, what's next? What does this time look like? How can we get the most out of the time we do have to spend with God? Well, this has probably been different for all of us, but we've already seen that some of the aids such as Lectio, Bible studies, Take Time, etc. to help us. But the first is to bring to God of how and when we should do this. And in the next few moments, Let's bring this to God in prayer. Let's ask him to show how we should spend our time with him away from the business of the day and to hear his voice in our lives. How to get away from all it to be with him and to pray. So let's just spend a few moments just praying in silently about how we can get away from it all, spend more time with God and to pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and what a challenge to uh, not check messages, to not respond to that WhatsApp, and to actually sit and spend time with God. Uh, maybe, Steve, you just were speaking to me, but uh, I'd like to think that there's more than just me who uh, is guilty of that, but uh, let's see. Uh, as we reflect on the words that, uh, and the challenges that Steve has given to us, let us sing again. Um, we're going to start with the song, Be Still. Um, so I am going to invite you to stand in a moment as we sing. Uh, but if you feel it more appropriate for you to sit while we sing, Be Still, uh, by all means do. And then we're going to sing um, the song, Spirit Song, uh, as, as a second one to that. So... If you're able and you wish to, let's stand and sing and we'll start with Be Still and Know That I Am God. Thank you.
Thank you, band. Uh, please take a seat. Uh, I'd like to invite Linda now to lead us in a time of prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray together. Father, we bring our prayers to you and share our joys, our trials, and our desires. Let us take this God-given time to stop and to pray. Thank you for summer days, we have had a few, for recreation, restoration, and holidays. Even for those not involved in education, September often feels like a new beginning. Help us to commit this academic year to have Jesus at the centre of our lives. Help us through our renewed busyness to be alone, to listen to you, to speak your name. We pray particularly today for the start of the new school year. Be with teachers and staff at St Francis and at Knightwood schools as they welcome children back. Grant them peace and enthusiasm as they begin another year. May the children take you into their new year as a friend and support, particularly if they are starting a new school or college or are uneasy about a new teacher. Thank you for the way in which St Francis School teach the children about you and that many meet you here in this church. We pray your blessings on the interim head, Kay, as Dawn continues her maternity leave. Help the staff to work together as a team, supporting one another. And we also lift Dawn, Robert and little Otto and his brothers before you. Please allow Dawn to focus on her family and not think about school. We ask you to be present at the back to school brunch next week that we might reflect your welcome and your love to those who come along. As our government prepare to resume their meetings in Parliament, we pray for wise decisions and godly consideration of the problems the country is facing. We know that times are tough and could get tougher. So we ask for patience and for sensitivity towards those who are genuinely struggling to make ends meet. Thank you for the organisations who work tirelessly to support those in need. And we ask that you bless and provide for the Basics Bank as demand increases. Thank you for Café and other police places for people to meet, support one another and enjoy company. We are saddened by the attitudes of those who involve themselves in needless violence. Your values have been eroded in these places and within these people. And we earnestly pray that the sense of community and right ways that we have seen in areas of disturbance would prevail and grow stronger. Speak deep in the hearts of your people, Lord, so that even those who don't profess you as Lord might feel anew the need for tolerance and peace. Strengthen those who do have a faith to speak out boldly, support with love and spread your word in their communities. Further afield, we know that many are suffering unimaginable devastation in Ukraine, Gaza, the West Bank, Lebanon, and yes, in Russia. Please, Lord, intervene in these paths of destruction and bring the hope of an end to the conflicts we hear about. Enable us to help in small ways by supporting aid organisations, both with money and items that are collected. Encourage us to keep praying even when we feel it's doing no good. We know that you hear us as you promised you do. And we bring to you now those who we know who need your love and care, especially at the moment. We all know someone who is grieving, recovering from or preparing for surgery, or battling cancer and its effects or suffering in other ways. I'll leave a moment or two of silence while we pray for those on our hearts and those who are caring for them.
whatever the situation, Father, bring your peace, the peace that the world cannot give. And finally, shall we sum up our prayers together by saying the prayer that Jesus taught us, which should appear on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We just continue in an attitude of prayer to just give thanks for the giving of this church, the giving of time and the financial giving, whether it's by bank accounts, through the debit machine, uh, through intermediate, in, in, intermittent giving. Uh, we just give thanks to Lord and we ask that that money is, is used for his work in this place. Amen. Uh, we're going to sing again, uh, and then we'll have our notices. Um, we're going to sing, To God Be the Glory. So let's stand, let's sing this one, uh, let's see if we can raise the roof. Uh, it's got quite a lot of gusto, so let's go for it. Um, to God Be the Glory. Thank you, band. you please take a seat. Uh, I think we uh, shook the rafters but uh, the wardens and uh, council members will be pleased that the roof is still intact and therefore we uh, are still safe when it starts to rain later in the year. Uh, 
time for notices. Uh, as uh, we've already heard a few times today, um, schools return tomorrow, uh, and so our normal pattern for the week uh, resumes. Most of this has actually been occurring all the way through the summer as well. But to remind you all, tomorrow at 10 o'clock we have morning prayer and 11 o'clock we have cafe. Tuesday, 10.30, Footprints. Footprints is the uh, meeting for under fives uh, who have some additional needs. We don't limit it if you're over five and you need to come. Uh, you come for their parents as well and their carers. Uh, Wednesday, uh, 9 o'clock, uh, cafe. Uh, a date for the diary in a couple of weeks on Sunday the 22nd. It is Messy Church uh, and a little bit further in advance on Saturday the 5th of October. Please make a note of that date. That is when we will be celebrating and uh, slightly saddened uh, that we will be uh, holding our leaving due for Sarah and Cliff as they move on. Their final Sunday will be Sunday, the 6th of October. There's a notice um, in the weekly bulletin if you are able to or wish to um, make some additional poppies for our wall of remembrance, where we have the crocheted and knitted poppies on our wall of remembrance. Uh, please speak to one of the people that are named in the notices. And I did also notice in the monthly notices, it actually gives the instructions to how to knit, I had no idea what they meant. They were, they were words, it was, it was like reading a French letter, as far as I can see. But some people tell me it's really easy to understand. Um, and, uh, and on the 12th of October, another date for the diary, on the 12th of October, from 10, which is a Saturday, from 10 till 12.30, there's a, um, a session being run here by Steve and Christine on intercessory prayer. Uh, so as we've been talking and thinking about praying this morning, if you feel that you would, um, you'd be interested in intercessory prayer, mainly praying uh, with groups of others or leading others uh, in prayer as well, and you'd be interested in that, and you'd be interested in um, coming to that on that morning, please do. Um, finally, a very uh, prosaic notice, but uh, a notice nonetheless. Uh, the toilet door lock has changed. Now, some of you may have already found that. It caught me out earlier. Uh, the toilet on the left as you go in. Apologies to those on outreach having to listen to our notes about toilets. Uh, but you'll appreciate it is an important one. The lock is now a, uh, uh, a remote lock. Uh, there is no physical door lock. This is obviously to help those people um, who aren't perhaps able to turn lock. Uh, locking bolts or whatever. Um, you don't need to touch. There's a, a touch pad. It looks like a touch pad next to the door. You just need to hold your hand over that pad for a few seconds. The light will begin to blink. That tells you it is locked. I then did the experiment and pushed it and made sure it really was. Uh, it, trust me, it works. The electromagnet works. And then when you wish to leave, you again hold your hand over it. The light stops blinking. You hear a click. The door's unlocked and you can leave. Um, so we can all go and have great fun after the service, uh, playing with the door. Andy Grove is expert on this and has volunteered to take anyone that needs a lesson on how the toilet door works in to do it. Again, apologies to those of you listening on the radio, having to uh, endure a notice about the opening and closing of a toilet door. Um, Yeah, it opens automatically. Sorry, it does also open automatically, so don't need to push uh, because uh, it's got a motor in it. And you don't need to try and close it. It will shut itself again after that too, and we don't want to break that motor. At the, uh, at the end of the service, if anything today um, has made you reflect, has made you think there is something that you would wish for prayer for, there will be... Uh, the opportunity to pray with two other people this morning about anything that you wish to bring in prayer to God. Um, on the uh, far corner of the church are some uh, comfortable chairs. There will be two people there uh, ready and waiting to pray with anyone who wishes to. If there are three people there, they will be praying. Please go have coffee, uh, take a few minutes and come back later. They're, they're happy to stay and wait for people 
um, who are coming. If there are only two, please go forward and have prayer. So um, I encourage you, if something has touched you this morning or there's something in your life that you uh, want to commit to God, praying with others is very, very powerful. And praying uh, about the situation is never anything that we should underestimate. There will also, for uh, those of us waiting for prayer or for anybody else wishing to uh, catch up with each other, have teas and coffees uh, available immediately after the service. If you're at Zoom, you will have to come put the kettle on yourself. And if you're on the radio, again, you will need to go and put the, ra- the uh, coffee or tea on for yourselves. And I wish you all the best for that. And so our final blessing this morning. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall softly on your feet. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.